much for joining us today. Whether you're joining us via YouTube or Facebook or two days from now, thank you so much for coming. Whether you're returning and you've seen my face before and you've been here before or you're new and we haven't met yet. My name's Hannah and my dog's name is Toffee. I'm gonna try and get her to jump up on this stool. Toffee, come here, come here. Hop up, come on, hop up, hop up, hop up. Yeah, you can do it, go on. Wow, that was amazing. Sit. Toffee has never come to record with us before. She's never been in one of our church services. Uh, she's never been to one of the church services that we had at St. Tom's, the building. Uh, so this is a really special moment for her and I would just like to take the moment to say welcome, thank you for coming, and say hello Toffee to everyone. Toffee, say hello. I think she hears a, a mouse or something, so. But she is very welcoming usually. Um, so Toffee's new to our service today and she's going to be helping me with service leading this morning. Uh, so please make her feel welcome and um, more, more welcome than she made you feel, I think would be, would be the optimal amount of welcome. Um, we're going to kick off this service today by reading a passage from Psalms. I'll be reading it. Toffee can't read, which is a bit of a character flaw, but we push past it. Oh, okay. Sorry, I don't want to offend you, Toffee, but um, let's read Psalm 66 verses 1 to 3. Make a joy joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to God glorious praise. Say how awesome are your deeds. I think God's pretty incredible. He made my dog Toffee. She's a cavoodle. She's Cavalier Cross Poodle. She's beautiful. Um, and I'm really thankful to him for a lot of things and not just my dog. This whole service won't be about her, I promise. Um, <laughs> So uh, we're going to say the Thanksgiving prayer, which we say together as a congregation. So please um, follow along as I say the words that will appear on the screen here. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, Toffee, what are we doing next? We're singing a song called Creation Sings the Father's Song. I love this hymn, and, and I hope that you sing along too. Whether you're by yourself or with a bunch of people, there's no shame. Sing out as loud as you want. Toffee and I will be singing from the, the couch together. So let's sing. <laughs>
Good morning, St. Tom's. Welcome back to another week with yours truly at Updates at St. Tom's. Before we go any further, this is a friendly reminder that our stage four lockdown has been extended by another two weeks, albeit with a little bit of changes. So don't go out there tomorrow doing your own business. You'll get fined. Now, we've got some breaking news. Our wonderful Pastor John Carrick is leaving for two weeks. <laughs> yes, John will be on leave for the turn three holidays. He's planned a great trip with his family to the Carrick household living room. For any pastoral inquiries, please contact Joshua over the next two weeks. His email is joshuam at stoms.org. And if you have anything admin related, you're welcome to contact me at admin at stoms.org. Yes, my real name is Admin. We're serving well over 100 international students every Saturday by giving those in need a much needed bag of groceries. We're running low on stock, so if you feel compelled to share the love of Christ, feel free to contact me, admin at stoms.org to find out how you can donate. In an exciting development, Industry Super Property Fund has decided to support our Hopeful Bags ministry with a $10,000 grant. Praise God that he has provided us such abundant support and resources for us to continue serving international students during this pandemic. Okay, let's talk about mission. All Christians, I'd argue, are missionaries, but how equipped do you feel to be a missionary in your context? Ridley College and CMS has an excellent course on mission mindset that you can go through on your own. The link is on the screen or it will be in the comment section or description below. Bear in mind that it will cost you $1. Wait a minute. Really? Yeah, $1. So it's a really good deal. It's well worth your time. If you've got time during this lockdown, why not learn from the very best on how to have a mission mindset? That is it from me this week. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Greetings, St. Thomas's Burwood. I'm Richard Feeney, State Manager of Prison Fellowship here in Victoria. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the work of Prison Fellowship. This is a special year to us, it's 40 years. We began in 1980 and you've been a big part of this ministry over those years. We've had men and women serving in so many different ways and we are so grateful um, for your prayer support, for your, for your financial support and for the volunteering support and the practical support, um, in Biscuit Bake, Angel Tree and all of these things. So uh, we don't take that lightly and really want to say thank you to, today to all of you, everyone that's been involved um, in supporting this mission in our own backyard here in Victoria. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 uh, says that one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. And we've had people planting and watering in so many different ways in prison fellowship. The Angel Tree program, Art from Inside, Visiting in Prison, Change on the Inside, The Prisoner's Journey, T24 Post Release, Camp for Kids, Mentoring Children. Uh, did I say biscuit bake? Uh, all of these things. And there's so many different ways people have been involved. And we do our part, God does his. So we've been serving in so many different ways over these 40 years. And as we've been doing our bit, God does his bigger bit. So thank you, St. Thomas's Burwood, for being such a faithful partner and support for this work. Um, at the moment, you might be wondering what's happening. Well, we're on mission. Um, at the phase one lockdown, we thought, well, this will last a few months and we'll get back into things. Um, after phase two lockdown, we thought, well, that thinking doesn't work anymore. We just can't say, well, we'll wait until next year. So we've kind of been praying and looking at what can we do now? And since we've kind of had that mindset, some doors have opened up that we didn't even see before. And one of them is a uh, video that we've produced to show inside prison that the inmates can see it, watch it, um, and can show them, uh, tell them about who Prison Fellowship is and how they can connect with our programs and our volunteers now and also after the COVID restrictions are lifted. So I don't even know if we would have come up with that um, outside of this current season. So um, we're excited about that. And some of the prisons have already taken that up and they're playing that in the prison to the prisoners 
Um, so that's exciting. So thank you. Um, yeah, we can look back at 40 years at all the different things that are happening, but we got a lot of work still ahead of us. Um, you know, much more mission than we have resource. So we really do appreciate every bit that you can provide through your giving, through your praying, and through your people in supporting us in volunteering. So thank you, St. Thomas's Burwood. God bless you. Keep safe and take care. St. Tom's, today's reading is Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me.
but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When the people saw the thunder and lightning, and heard the trumpet, and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance, and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance, while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep, your goats and your cattle. Wherever, wherever I cause my name to be honoured, I will come to you and bless you. If you make an altar of stones for me, do not build it with dressed stones, for you will defile it if you use a tool on it. And do not go up to my altar on steps, or your private parts may be exposed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, St. Tom's. It's good to be with you this morning. I hope you're well. My name is Brenton. And as I've been preparing for this sermon this morning, I thought of Kevin Giles and how when he introduces himself, he often says that um, every now and then they invite the retired Anglican clergy to come and preach a sermon. Well, today they've invited the first year theological student to come and preach a sermon. So it's good to be with you. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that you may be present with us as we read and study your word this morning. Help each of us to understand your message to us. I pray we may be inspired to love you more and serve you better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is the day that we've been looking forward to. Sunday, the 13th of September. For months, we've been hoping and praying for a successful campaign of virus suppression in our city. I'm sure many of us are feeling as though today is a bit of an anticlimax. But as we've seen over the last week, Melbourne is nearly there. Less than 40 cases, less than 50, sorry, cases today as I record this video. I saw an advertisement for ABC News this week. It included Australians gathering together, hugging and comforting each other and used adjectives preceded by the words we are to describe how Australians as a nation are feeling in 2020. Well, I guess that you can imagine what some of those adjectives were. Are, uh, adjectives were. We are anxious. We are restricted. We are worried. We are tired. We are hopeful. We are scared. We are stressed. Well, if we read chapters 19 and 20 of Exodus, I think that similar adjectives could probably describe Israel as a nation, as it anticipated God's presence with them at the foot of Mount Sinai and looked forward to better times ahead, 
in the land that God had promised them. If you've just joined us, then as a church, St. Thomas has been making its way through the book of Exodus, a book of the Bible which explains how God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt and how God freed them from oppression to be a nation that would serve and worship him. Today we come to what is perhaps one of, if not the most widely known passages of Old Testament scripture. Around the world, the Ten Commandments can be found in churches, synagogues, even courthouses. A good portion of the community, even in today's post-Christian world, could list some of the Ten Commandments without even needing to Google them. However, this does not mean the Ten Commandments are well understood. They have been described by commentators as having taken on a life of their own, often detached from their context in the book of Exodus. So today we're asking, what is the special place of the Ten Commandments? What is their special place to God? What is their special place to Israel? And do they have a special place for us? Well, what is their special place for God? Exodus 20 begins a lengthy section of the book relating to Old Testament law. The opening verses provide context for the Ten Ten Commandments which follow. In verse 1, God himself is speaking. Now this compares to chapter 19 last week, where God addressed Israel through Moses as God's representative. But here, God speaks directly to the nation of Israel signalling that what follows is important to God and important for Israel to listen to. I think verse 2 also helps us out with context. God establishes authority with, I am the Lord your God. We think back to Exodus 3.14 earlier this year when God patiently introduced himself to Moses at the burning bush. I am who I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the burning bush. Verse 2 reminds Israel who God is. This is the one true God of Israel speaking, the God who delivered Israel through the Red Sea. I think these verses tell us how important this passage and the Ten Commandments which follow are to God. The order of events here are also important. They reveal part of God's character to us. Israel has already been freed from Pharaoh. Israel has already become a nation, from slavery under Pharaoh to God's treasured possession. God does not say, follow these commands, then I will free you from Pharaoh. That part of the story has already happened. The Ten Commandments are not a condition of becoming God's people. The relationship between God and Israel has already begun. The Ten Commandments are an extension of God's love and grace already shown to Israel in the Exodus from Egypt. So what is their special place for Israel? Well, if the Ten Commandments are important to God, they are probably of even more importance to Israel. To continue this story, God desires his people be more like him. Israel is now called to live holy lives and become a holy nation. God begins with the Ten Commandments as a summary of how this will happen. Now, ancient law was very different to the modern laws that we live under under today. Ancient law was by its nature quite ambiguous. We might think that the remainder of the book of Exodus and the entire book of Leviticus is a pretty long and exhaustive collection of law, but they are nowhere near the volume of laws that modern societies have today, which aim to be very specific and cover every possible offence. Ancient laws, of which God's covenant law is an example and the Ten Commandments are part of, were rather guiding principles. And people were expected to conclude from these principles, what behaviour was right and what behaviour was wrong. 
Now we might need an example to help us illustrate this. So let's just jump forward to Exodus 21, 15. As an example here, the law says that anyone who attacks their mother or father should be put to death. But if an Israelite attacked his sister, does that mean that he or she is off the hook? Well, probably not. The Israelites had to learn the underlying principles in any law and not let the specifics of the law lead them to interpret it too narrowly. So, the Ten Commandments are like a foundational set of principles that summarise and guide the more specific regulations of God's covenant law which follow them. Well, let's jump in and have a look at some of the Ten Commandments themselves. They can be divided into two categories. The first four concern Israel's relationship with God, and the subsequent six govern Israel's relationship with itself. The first two commandments, you shall have no other gods before me, and the second, which prohibits making idols for worship, are often grouped together. These commandments are of real importance to Israel, who as a nation constantly struggled, as we see throughout much of our Bibles, to remain faithful to God. Israel were up against it. They were surrounded by nations that supported an array of gods and goddesses, where idols of the other gods were an ancient custom. But this is precisely why Israel needed the Ten Commandments. And they were such a gift in, repealing, in, in revealing God's perfect standards. They became a protection from sin and humbled Israel of the need to repent. The second group of commandments from verse 12 to 17 ordered relationships within the Israelite community. They governed how Israel should interact with one another. Now you'll notice that some of these commands are very short. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Just a few words. But this, or the fact that they are more social than religious, does not mean they are any less important. The commands are given to Israel as a whole. But here, the actions of individuals within the nation have far-reaching consequences. We can use our current circumstances, perhaps, as an example, where if one Victorian workplace throws a boozy office party or one nightclub decides to open illegally, the consequences on public health and community transmission in Victoria could be disastrous. On the other hand, when community transmission in Victoria is suppressed, it will not be because of a few responsible individuals but the entire community working together. We see in verse 5, the effect of disobedience by Israel will be felt for a long time. However, in verse 6, we see that obedience has long-lasting, even eternal reward for Israel. And in verse 12, we see that corporate obedience, obedience by the community, the nation as a whole, will lead to long life in the promised land. Israel must now show obedience and repentance for the blessing of God's presence and life in the promised land. Grace, obedience, blessing. The Ten Commandments are important for Israel. They provide Israel with a glimpse of what God is like and how he wants to be worshipped. We already know that God is faithful, and these Ten Commandments highlight the place of the Israelite within the nation of Israel. To be a holy nation, faithfulness is required by all. God is preparing Israel to be an even bigger part of his story. He's training them for entry into the Promised Land so that they might be order amidst chaos, be a holy nation who by looking at the nations will come closer to God. Well, do the Ten Commandments have a special place for us? 
I want to say that whilst the Ten Commandments provided Israel with a glimpse of God, we are fortunate enough to have seen a much bigger glimpse of God through the person of Jesus. Jesus made more than an appearance. He lived amongst us. But does that mean that we get to disregard the teaching of the Ten Commandments? Well, there's been a lot of thinking about this, and I'm not an expert. But I don't think that that's what Jesus asks us to do. In Matthew 22, 36, Jesus is challenged with a question from a group of Pharisees. What is the greatest commandment in the law? The Pharisees ask. Jesus replies, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Well, did those two commandments that Jesus mentioned sound like the Ten Commandments? I think that the Ten Commandments actually fit within these two. The first four commandments look up to reflect the greatest commandment that Jesus speaks of. Love the Lord your God. And the six remaining commandments fit within the second commandment, to love your neighbour. The Ten Commandments were an extension of God's grace to Israel, so they may obey and be blessed. The Ten Commandments continue to reflect God's image, and since we, in Christ, are recreated in God's image, we ought to continue to keep and aspire to these laws, helped by the Holy Spirit. So how can we do this? Well, I think in our current context, we can admit that we are tired, worried, stressed, and frustrated, and that we need God's help to persevere through our current situation. We can recognise that just like Israel, we ourselves are up against it and admit when things have gotten between us and our relationship with God. We can start by resisting the aspects of culture and life that disturb, that unsettle us from loving God with all of our heart, soul and mind. We can consider how best we can serve God and in the context of the coronavirus we have a wonderful opportunity to love our neighbours. We can do what Christians have done in previous global pandemics before and been recognised for. We can care for those who are vulnerable, like we've been doing, like the international students at Deakin. And through this, we can play our small part in God's great big plan so that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Let's now confess our sins to Almighty God, saying together, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, St. Thomas. When we come to pray, we come to engage really deeply with the two great commandments, to love God and to love our neighbour. Because we come to God, acknowledging our need for him, his rule over all things, and our dependence on him. And we bring to God those in our world, the people that God made and loves, and the people that we share this earth with and share our lives with. So would you, uh, in the way that you find most helpful, engage with uh, me and together as one church this morning in prayer. Pray for the world, pray for the church, pray for one another. Let's pray together. Great God, we come to you to recognise our need. To recognise, Lord God, that there is so little that we can do and there is so much that we need. We come to you in great thanks that you always hear us, that you know us and love us and care about us, and that your care and concern for us is proven in Jesus' death and his resurrection. And so we come to you, Lord God, and ask that you might hear our prayer, shape us to be like Jesus, teach us to pray, and guide us into all truth. Lord God, we give you thanks that our church is able to do something in the midst of this pandemic. We thank you, Lord God, for the work of St. Tom's Hope, the board, Trami, who have put together all that they have for our food bank to international students and others in our local community. Would you please continue to resource this ministry that it may serve others' needs? Would you continue to let word spread to those who are in need that we are there to support them? And would you please give wisdom to us as a church, Lord God, for how it is that we proclaim your name in the midst of uh, this opportunity to connect this small act of human kindness to the great story of grace. Lord God, we pray for all those students that you would provide for their needs, give them resilience, success in their studies, and that you would open their eyes to your goodness and love. Lord, we pray for this church, uh, St. Tom's, that you love we give you thanks that we might be together and share our lives together. And we pray that amongst all of us, you would build resilience and strength and that you would foster, grow and nurture our connections to one another and our care and love for each other. Lord God, we pray that you would help us to be a church that loves you with all of our being, that holds nothing back, surrenders all to you and seeks your light to touch all our lives. Would you grow our love for you? And may you unite all of us in the love we have for you. And would you give energy to our love for each other. That empowered in love, the love that you first loved us with, we might love and care for each other and display your goodness to a watching world. Lord, we pray for our city and our state. We pray, Lord God, that you would um, stem the spread of the coronavirus in our state and our city, that cases would continue to go down, that um, we might move towards reopening. We do pray for protection for healthcare workers and essential workers. We pray for your healing and restoration for those who are ill. And we pray, Lord God, that you would care for those who have been affected um, adversely in their mental health by the great strain of being distanced and separated from our friends in a normal way of life. Lord God, we pray that you might draw many people to recognise the empty promises of a world without you and that you might 
uh, help Christians in this state to speak faithfully to your love and your invitation to life. We pray, Lord God, that as we move towards reopening, that the lessons of uh, how hard it is to be apart from each other and how hard it is to be separated from others uh, would not be lost, but that, Lord God, people might come out of this longing for community and that you might show them the goodness of Christian unity as a testimony to your faithfulness. Lord, we pray that you might bless all the endeavours in our state that are seeking to care for the least and the lost, that each one of our neighbours would be cared for and would make it through the difficult weeks ahead as we come out of this. Lord God, we know that you love the world. So we pray, Lord God, that you would uh, bless and help all those in trouble and trial. Father, we pray that the fires in the United States would come to an end, that you would bless the efforts of firefighters uh, to contain the blaze. And we pray that um, you would protect the environment and people's homes and livelihoods. Father, we are sad for the surging cases in France and pray that you would bring an end to the spread of the virus there as well, that you would bless governments and healthcare officials as they do what they can to contain it and that you would protect healthcare workers there as well. Lord God, we pray for success in the talks between the Taliban and Afghan government for peace and pray that a solution can be found that is good for all. We pray, Lord God, that fighting there would cease and that you would bring success to those talks. We pray that as Mali works out its interim government options and its the consequences of its uh, military power there, that, Lord God, you would bless reconciliation and bring stability to Mali. And we pray for the protests in Belarus and in Bulgaria, that where there is corruption, it would be overcome by justice and that there would be success uh, for the good of all in both those places. Lord God, as democracy in our world is continually shown to be insufficient on its own, we pray, Lord God, for your church to speak of your kingdom to come and the love that you have for all people. So, Lord God, we come to you today because we need you and because it is your rule that is over all the world. And we come to you today that the people in this world might have the truest blessing of knowing you as the God and Saviour of all humankind. Lord, through this, through what remains of this lockdown and pandemic, we ask that you would help us to pray, help us to love you, and help us to love one another. In Jesus' great and everlasting name we pray. Toffee, come on. This is, you said you'd do this part. Come on, hop up. Come here, come here, hop up. You said you would help. Come on, hop up. <sighs> Toffee, it's time for off a tree. So in off a tree, we normally pass a basket up and down the aisles of church. Um, not one like this, but this just represents what it could look like. And people will usually put in um, money or, yeah, or checks or whatever they would like, um, usually financial related stuff. Uh, but obviously we can't really do that at the moment because we're not in the church building and uh, you wouldn't tithe anyway because you're a dog. Yeah, it's true. But luckily people can be giving online um, via our website and you can find the details on our Facebook or just by searching St. Thomas Burwood. Uh, if you're new today, just like Toffee here, and if you're not a dog and you're a human, uh, please don't feel obligated to give uh, this service as our gift to you. And if you're returning, we acknowledge that a lot of you are giving online. So um, if you want to give via this basket, I'm sure we could arrange something for you, but this one's mine and I actually really like it, so I'll probably keep it. Um, but get in touch with us if you're not sure how to give. Uh, we've got some great initiatives. St. Tom's Hope Food Drive is incredible, doing incredible work with the international students on Saturdays and giving them food throughout the week. So thank you to those who've donated not only their money towards that cause, but also their time. And we'd also always love for you to be praying for us. <coughs> She's mad. <coughs> Called her a dog. <coughs> Sorry. Um, 
uh, we're going to be uh, moving into the song which is up next. Thank you to everyone who's come along to our service today, whether you're logging in now or you've been here the whole time, like Toffee, who's done a brilliant job. Thank you so much for coming along today, Toffee. 
Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Uh, there's prayer ministry after the service and several Zoom cafe catch-ups, hanging out sessions available. So please feel free to join any one of those. Say bye, Toffee.